hello and welcome to another episode of Bushcraft Dave. I'm out on a two night overnight camp. I've just come out and put out my brand new Eurohike Avon 3 DLX tent, which you may have seen in a review already, or you may be seeing in a review soon. I'm not sure which way around I'm gonna end up putting it out. Um, but yeah, thank you for joining me. Um, oh, what am I doing today? Well, I've had a long, fairly tough week at work. As a teacher, the year 11 exams, well, not only do they take it out of the year 11 students, bless them, but it also takes it out of the teachers. And I was ready. I was ready to have a little bit of time outside, fresh air, tent, food, bit of sky above my head. Um, not staring at a laptop, not stressing out about exam papers, but heading out, bit of outdoor time. So what's my plan for these couple of days? Well, fortunately I got the tent up, sort of just to say, in amongst the gap of some rain. Um, it's pretty good now, so I'm looking forward to cooking up a little bit of a treat in a second. Um, and I'm not sure whether that's gonna go out as part of this video or not. You'll see it, but maybe you'll see how I've cooked it in a separate video on one of my little Trangia mini cooks, because I'm going to make a chickpea and spinach curry. Um, yeah, look forward to that one. You may have already seen the video. You may be coming to see it soon, or maybe it's in this video. I don't know. It's all a bit complicated. Um, it depends how much faffing about I do on this video. I don't want it to last forever. I want to keep it simple for you, dear. So I'm going to overnight camp. And then tomorrow my plan is I am going to do a hike, weather permitting, um, around Ilham Hall. It's one that I meant to do ages ago, but the weather was against me. It's probably about two or three months ago when I made the foolish decision to camp in the middle of winter. Not foolish, but... It wasn't a good idea. The weather looks pretty good this weekend. Touch wood. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting out for that walk. I'm going to camp again another night. Cook something else up. I think that one will end up being on the video. Because I feel like I'm going to make some sort of stew or slow cook or, or I don't know. Some, something. I'll figure it out. You'll find out soon enough. Yeah, so two nights camping. Plenty of break plenty of headspace um, which definitely feels like what I need at the minute to clear the old noggin box ready to attack another week of work but yeah thank you for joining me um, if I think of anything meaningful to say you'll hear from me again but if not you'll either see what the curry was that I've knocked up and see me licking my lips and enjoying that delicious meal or disgusting meal and maybe we'll see, we'll see if the sky clears. Maybe we'll have some shots of the stars or, I don't know. But I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for joining me. Have a look and see what we get up to on this two night hike and sleepover and cook and stuff. See you in a moment.
Well, good morning. Up and about. A beautiful day. It's kind of one of those days where sort of initially I, I know I'm going to be cool enough to need a jacket, maybe a jumper. Well, no, I've not got a jumper on right now, but you can tell it's going to be a hot one. So I'm just walking past the river. Um, at the bottom of the grounds of the beautiful Ilham Hall. Do you know what? The drive to get to Ilham is spectacular. I've tried to do this walk once before and I ended up getting to the car park with no money. So there's no cards. You need money, okay? You need cash. Coins of the realm. Um, and when I came down that other time, the weather was shocking. It was grim. Horrible weather. But you know what? It was... Um, it was still pretty stunning then, and on today, on a lovely clear day, um, absolutely beautiful. So it's cost me £4.50 to park up for up to four hours. It's a nice little weird. I just deliberately dug out little, I don't know, shelters, whatever. Yeah, it cost £4.50 to park for four, four hours, six quid for the day. Um, you couldn't actually go and have a look around Ilham Hall as I, I was there today um, as a private function on, looks like a wedding. So can't go and have a real look around Ilham Hall, which is a shame. But even from the outside, very spectacular. Right then, last night, it was probably one of the comfiest nights sleep I think I've ever had. Um, the temperature was about bang on. I didn't end up getting too cold. I wasn't ending up getting too hot. It's absolutely fantastic um, temperature to sleep in. I was pretty comfy, which is rare. Um, yeah, I got a decent, decent night's sleep. It's never quite the same, but it was a good night's sleep. Let's have a look at this behind me. This, there's some sort of like almost deliberate retaining wall been built in. Must be part of the grounds of Willem. So this walk that I'm having a look at this morning, it's from my Rambler's Short Walks in the Peak District book, the Collins Short Walks. Walk number 17, Ilham Hall. Um, I think it's going to take me just over a couple of hours. I think that'll mean it's probably about four or five miles. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. consult the book. Four and a half miles, two and a half hours it reckons. Um, and it says, we'll soon see, moderately easy terrain. Well at the minute, I'm just walking across a, a lovely, well laid out path. Lambs in the field to the left of me. You can smell the wild garlic to the right of me, absolutely hefty smell. And yeah, thank you for joining me for this this walk between my night and my tent. And I've already come up for my plan for what I'm going to cook tonight. Um, it's kind of going to rely on whether all of the ingredients will fit in the Trangier. I'm, I've done so much cooking on the Trangier Mini recently. And I saw this recipe and I was like, I'm going to have to do it in the 27. I will not be able to do it in the Mini. I think even if I scaled it down to one person, I think I would really struggle to do it in the Mini. So, something to look out for shortly in the video. What am I gonna cook? I'm sure it's in title description. It's a spoiler, Never mind. Um, but yeah, let's have a wander and see what the walk around Illum's like. can pause that if you like to have a read of that but ultimately this stone was found up in the village of Ilham and it's thought to date from the 11th century with some of the carvings on it 
Oh, what a glorious day. Those beautiful greens. Oh. Yes, enjoying this. Uphill. You can only just see the bridge where I came out already. <sighs> nice day for it though. Oh. Now I'm pretty much up at the top. I reckon I've only got about another 50 feet to go. But you don't quite get the perspective of the, the drop. I'm going to say that's one of the steepest, most challenging bits of walk I've ever done. <sighs> oh, but the views are brilliant. It's almost like a, well, I'm going to say like Vesuvius. Vesuvius is going to be massive compared to that, but almost something volcanic about some of the hills over there. Whew. Right, I'm pretty much at the top. Have a look at these views. Down the bottom, through the trees, I can just about make out. Let me see if I can put my finger in the right place. Illum Hall's down here somewhere. I can just about see it. Oh! Oh, I hope that's the only climb I've got to do because that's done me. Oh, get my breath back. Oh, that was a tricky part of the journey. Just had to come through field with lots of lambs and their mums and just had to plot a very careful route through to this little stile that's got me over the wall and away from them and there should be a path just to the left of the house here or the ruins of a house let's see It's been a long time since I've been out walking amongst livestock. Um, just been a bit of a stark reminder as to how careful you need to be really when you're walking about in the countryside. Because this is their land. You know, we've been given right of access to get through it, but it's theirs. So and especially during this time now in May, obviously their lambs, they're gonna be super protective of them. So despite how careful I was trying to be and navigating around so that the, the lambs could run to their mum or the mum could run to the lambs and I, I kind of wouldn't end up caught in the middle of that. There were still a few times when clearly I'd got a bit too close for comfort for the for the sheep's point of view I, I thought I'd given them plenty of space as best I could and there was a couple of times one like postured and stared right at me stamped its feet on the ground and I thought it was gonna go but fortunately I sort of just worked my way past it and then another time one did start running towards me um, I think very much sheep end up getting into a case of fight or flight unfortunately for us most of the time it's the flight bit they know they can get away with the little ones but it's the odd occasion when they might run at you <sighs> nervy times but you know if I want to be doing this sort of stuff I've got to be prepared for that and 
hope I can outrun a sheep. I think it's a rare occasion that stuff like that happens, so all good. At the minute, just a lot of road walking. I've not done much road walking recently. I kind of like it. Certainly a decent uh, slope that we're going at. Good underfoot. I'm just plodding along, eating up the miles at the minute. There's something interesting through the through the trees. Let's see if I can get it in shot. Did I just see it in the background? I think it's a village church. We're just heading into a village called Blore. B L O R E. Blore. Maybe it's an Italian village. Blore. Um, but my guess is that that's the church for. Oh, blimey. But I'm guessing that that's the church for whoever the wealthy landowner was that, you know, populated the village of Blore. Yeah. We'll see what we see. I reckon I'm probably about halfway around now. What time is it? 20 past six. Ooh. Yeah, I'm unlikely to be back at camp until about eight o'clock, I reckon, but fortunately the dish I'm making today says we can probably have it ready in about 10 minutes, which for me means I'll probably have it ready in 45 minutes. Anyway, let's see what we get to. Yeah, it is a church, look. Nice. Do you know what I'm also thinking I might end up encountering while I'm here? And we'll see how I'm doing for time. But I think I'm near the Dovestones. Illum and Dovedale, it's all pretty close. It's all pretty well linked, but I don't know whether the Dovestones is the same as the path across the river at Dovedale. But we'll see. Anyway, keep walking. Well, we should eventually, when we get past this field, be heading pretty much back to the river and walking back along the river pretty much back to Ilham Hall. It's been a wonderful day of walking so far. More to come. I don't think this was the road I drove in on. Could be wrong. Anyway, heading down to the river. And while I'm on, in case I forget, up on the path earlier on, I disturbed um, a different animal in the undergrowth as I was walking along. I didn't even see it sat there, but as I got close and it kind of heard me, it sort of jumped up and ran away but I don't know what it was. So I need your help. I thought maybe it was a really small deer. So maybe a fawn, maybe a baby deer, but I'm not convinced about that. My next thought is that maybe it was a hare. Now I know a hare and a rabbit are very, very similar creatures. But I know every time I think I might have seen one, Mrs. Bushcraft Dave points out to me that hares are massive. And it was massive. So, something probably about the size of a baby deer, but probably moving a bit more like a rabbit. Let me know. Did I see a hare? Because colour-wise, it's a sort of similar colour to a deer. Browns, dark browns, maybe blacks. Yeah. Not sure. But it was exciting. But it was big. 
we're really close here to where the Dovedale Walk start. I believe just in, in the bottom of the little valley uh, between those two hills is the start of the Dovedale Walk. So I think up to the right there is Thorpe Cloud, which I've never actually gone up to the top of when I've been to Dovedale. Hmm. So yes, maybe when I saw the sign for the Dove Stones, which said it was about a mile and a half away from Ilham, I think it may have been the stepping stones that I've done before. So I think I might end up not going. Across this bridge somewhere, I believe. There we go, Ilham. One mile. something over there that I am not liking the look of. We'll see when I get closer. I mean, I'm genuinely, I'm not too bad when it comes to just kind of getting on with stuff and doing a walk and braving it. But I am, I'm afraid birds is one of the ones I'm scared of. And these, these in the Canadian geese. Lots of them, thank goodness they're all walking away. God. Stay over there, guys. Anyway, now we're on the final stretch. We've just rejoined the River Dove. Um, and yeah, we shouldn't be far away, really. Less than a mile, maybe? Something like that. We can't be far away now. Just got to follow the path of the River Dove all the way back to Ilham Hall. Uh, what time are we on now? No idea. No idea. Do you know what? This has been a, a really interesting walk. Um, Remember I said at the beginning of this walk, the book said that it was going to be easy to moderate walking. If we just take out that one section that was incredibly steep, incredibly steep, yeah, it's been pretty standard, pretty sensible walking. Sort of stuff that's nice and straightforward, one foot in front of the other, plodding along, the journey eats itself up, good exercise, all good. The thing that's made this walk not enjoyable, really, is the wildlife. Sheep, geese, possibly a hare. All I need now is a field of cows and my walk of fear is complete. You know what, look up there. That is a field of cows. But fortunately they're in the next field. Nearly there. So the uh, buttresses at the feet of the bridge over the river, they are now significantly higher than the current water line because the River Dove doesn't flow anywhere near as heftily as it once did. That used to be the height of the river and this river bank would have come pretty much all the way up to here where the trees are. 
So it's changed a lot. Let's go and have a look. space. There we have it, prawn, egg fried rice, carrot, peanuts, I even stuck some prawn crackers on the side.
No, I made this on the Trangia 27 because I wanted to make a bigger portion because I've been out for a walk today. But look, I've got a whole another pan full. It's a big old meal. Let's give it a try. Let's try and get a bit of everything. Some chilli sauce, peanut. Yeah, that's really good. You know what would have been a useful idea for making this dish? Those of you that seen my cook from maybe walk number three, when I did a Chinese chicken chow mein, maybe I should have brought my wok out with me. Delicious. Mm. Yeah, really good. Well, I'm going to sit and enjoy this. I might have a wander to the pub. Go and get myself a quick drink. But other than that, I'll probably be done for the night. Catch you in the morning. Morning, everybody. Oh. Hello. It's been a lovely couple of days. Couple of nights camping. It's just been good to get out and about, get some fresh air. Weather's been nice. And fairly comfy in here. Quite spacious. Yeah, I've quite enjoyed this tent. It's um it's something I might well use again. For those of you who particularly care, let me tell you what I've been using. I've been using a Therma rest pillow. It squidges down quite small, but it's it's a lot spongier and fluffier than a hair pillow. Doesn't go too tiny. But I'm car camping, aren't I? So I can use whatever I like. And my sleep mat is the Therma rest Neo Air X Lite. Sleeping bag wise, I haven't even got a clue what this is. I bought this a few years ago as a, a, a really lightweight, packs down to not a lot, um, summer sleeping bag. Lovely stuff. But I think I'm going to get my tent taken down and get myself home. Yeah, I think that's it for today. Thank you for joining me, everybody, and I hope you join me on my next little adventure, cook, or travelling expedition. I'll see you in the next one. At least I hope it was a, a deer or a hare and I haven't just found I don't know, some low-lying other wild animal that might want to take me alive. I don't know. Sorry. I'm rambling now. Which is true. I am rambling. I must be tired. Keep going.